Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Finally, after a long wait from pre-order, I received my Apple Watch Series 6. And I took it for a workout and tested its ECG and SpO2 sensor during the workout. And in today's video, I'll share you the findings. By the way, you are hearing from a first time Apple Watch user, as on this channel I have reviewed a ton of watches and phones, but this is my first Apple Watch and I was waiting for it. So let's get started. If it's your first time on my channel, please consider subscribing as I do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials and much more. You'll find a dedicated playlist for Apple tech videos, so be sure to check it out. Now before I start, the intent of this video is to show you guys my personal testing of this Apple Watch Series 6. By no means you should take anything that I say in this video as a medical advice. Always consult your doctor before relying on any such devices. With that disclaimer aside, let's first talk about the ECG and the SpO2 sensor. Now I have reviewed and compared a lot of SpO2 sensor on different smartwatches and compared them with an actual pulse oximeter. So based on my experience, I can say from all the SpO2 sensor on different watches, Apple Watch Series 6 SpO2 sensor stands out distinctively and here is why. First of all, it's fast. I know I had to wait for more than 30 seconds on the Huawei Watch GT2, but here on Apple Watch it's just 15 seconds and that's remarkably fast. On my Fitbit Versa Sense, there is no option of having an individual SpO2 measurement. You can only get a nighttime average, which is a bummer. The TicWatch Pro 3 also has the SpO2 sensor, but I haven't received my pre-order yet. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out that video. Anyways, secondly, I think it's more accurate. With other smartwatches, there was always an unsatisfactory lag of few numbers up or down when compared and averaged with the consecutive reading from an actual pulse oximeter. But with Apple Watch Series 6, so far for me it has been almost close and consistent. I'll show you later on during the video about SpO2 during a workout session, so stick around. And also the animation during the SpO2 measurement is so satisfying and smooth versus other competitors it's just very basic. And finally, Series 6 gets reading every single time and sometimes on Huawei Watch GT2, it would say place the watch properly and try again and to top it up with Series 6, the readings are synchronized on both watch and the phone for your records, which was not the case with Fitbit Versa Sense and Huawei Watch GT2. Now let's talk about the ECG sensor. Right off the back, Series 6 at this point in time in Canada does not have an official competitor. I know Samsung is about to launch the ECG update on the Active 2 and the Watch 3, but at the time of shooting this video, I haven't received that update on my Active 2 or Watch 3 yet. I will post the video of it as soon as it's available. And on Fitbit Versa Sense, the ECG is FDA approved, but the update will roll out in October of 2020. So with that in context, I don't have anything to compare it against unfortunately. But from my experience, I am impressed. Other smartwatch manufacturers now have to do something unique to get me off. Well anyways, here is my rationale for it. Number 1. It shows actual graph with the P, Q, R, S and T wave and you can see each segments like the ST segment, the PR interval, the PR segment. All this what I said will not make sense to anyone except a healthcare professional. So if you are a healthcare provider, you can casually see the distance between each wave, length of each segment and even catch a premature ventricular contraction despite of this being a 2 lead ECG versus a 12 lead ECG. Obviously despite of you being a healthcare provider, it's always good idea to get a reading from a reliable medical grade equipment. But I think it just feels good to see all this on my wrist. Secondly, it's again very fast, just 30 seconds for the reading. The animation again like SpO2 is just mesmerizing. And finally, I can get the record of entire measurement on my phone for my records to even show it to your healthcare provider. Now I will test this out during the workout later on during the video. With all that being said, as a first time Apple Watch user, Apple really got me hooked up. Now I usually go for an intermittent run for 15 minutes once during the day on top of my twice a week high intensity workout. So I took this series 6 for a quick 20 minute intermittent run on my treadmill and right off the back I am impressed with the heart rate measurement. 
calorie count especially the active as well as the total calorie count which was not the option on other smartwatches that I have used. With this feature I can see how much calorie was burnt during the activity versus the entire workout. The heart rate graph felt on par with what I subjectively felt during the workout. I mean if you stopped and rested for a few minutes your heart rate should get down but from my test there was no unexpected dips or high. And that's not just series 6, I have seen that with other smartwatches too but the active calorie burnt is something unique. Anyways compared to my treadmill it seems like series 6 overshooted on calorie but that's not true actually series 6 is correct as it has my other data like height weight etc versus the treadmill just calculates calories based on a preset formula so it's not subjective. Anyways so far I am impressed with the workout tracking and series 6 offers a lot of workout options not to mention you can even add more custom ones. But that is not just Series 6, I have seen more workout options on other smartwatches too. Finally, let's talk about what happened during my workout. So the Series 6 was tracking everything fine, so I thought why not measure ECG during a low intensity bout. And right off the back, despite of movement, as obviously I was jogging, and Series 6 was able to get the reading. Right off the back, after the reading, Series 6 showed that this ECG was not checked for AFib because the heart rate was over 120 beats per minute. But I still can see the entire graph from my phone to see for any abnormalities myself and then convey it to my doctor which would be partly like an exercise stress test or a treadmill stress test where a physician will assess your ECG and blood pressure with a 12 lead ECG and obviously a medical grade equipment to monitor you during that exercise session. But I really think it's just good to have for someone who exercises regularly and has a pre-medical condition obviously monitored or especially for those who are starting out to do exercises. Again a quick disclaimer if you are starting out exercising and you have a pre-medical condition consult your doctor first versus using the series 6. But I'm just impressed with what this thing on my wrist can do considering it's just a 2 lead ECG. Now about the SpO2 measurement, right off the back when I tried to start the measurement of the SpO2 during the exercise, it prompted unsuccessful measurement caused by motion or tapping your fingers. I tried multiple times but it didn't work. And I did not want to stop the exercises so I measured it right after the exercise without any cool down to see if there was an actual dip down and there was which showed 97%. I'm a fairly healthy individual and at rest no matter how many times I try the reading are almost close to 100% or 100% for the majority of time. So after exercises it went down to 97% so I think the oxygen carrying capacity of my blood cell is still good. Again, don't consider this as a medical grade equipment reading, but I am impressed especially unlike my Huawei Watch GT2, after an exercise it did not give me reading either due to a sweat or placement and if it did I had to wait for almost 30 to 40 seconds for it, versus on series 6 it's just instantaneous. Now there is also a, a new very helpful feature with the series 6 and that is the noise level indicator where if you open the app it will show the noise levels in real time as well as give you a context to that number so you know if that is okay or not. Sound levels are measured in decibels and when you go in the learn more there is a brief color coded explanation of what each level means. Basically if you are in the green or ok sound level which is less than 80 decibel it should not impact your hearing even if you were to stay in there for a long term. However if you are in a, in a loud zone that is repeated long term exposure to sound levels above 80 decibels it can cause permanent hearing damage. So use hearing protection or move into a quiet area. They even have given a value that 80 decibel for 5 hour 30 minute, 85 decibel for 1 hour, 90 decibel for 30 minutes, 95 for just 10 minutes and 100 decibel for just few minutes a day can cause temporary hearing loss. Which is an interesting fact to know. 
Next time around, if I were to enter a zone which sometimes you perceive as not too loud can be actually loud and this will give you a numeric reference. This is a very helpful feature for people who work in a dynamic environment. Now please make sure to subscribe as I'll be doing more videos of this including all the features and compare it against other smartwatches as if you are a follower you know that I talk a lot of smartwatches on this channel. With that being said, I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up. It really means a lot. Also, follow me on my other social media network for early preview to upcoming videos and free giveaways. Links are in the description of all my videos. Thanks so much for watching and take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.